alternating cast on for one by one rib creates a rounded fully or semi stretchy edge two samples here show semi stretchy edge with the top sample being cast on on two sizes smaller needles than the ribbing itself and the next two samples are the fully stretchy um, cast on with the top sample being cast on on two sizes smaller needles than the ribbing itself the difference between the first two samples and the last two samples are that the first two samples were um, after the cast on the double knit um, two rows were used to create a more rounded edge as you can see right here and i will go into details in the next videos To start a cast on, you need to use either right or left twist. Using a slip knot is not as compatible with this edge as the twist start. Right and left twist start lets you alter one by one rib sequence, knit purl or purl knit. This is the left twist and it creates the first knit stitch. This is the right twist start. Use the right twist if you want the next stitch to be a knit stitch. Just like I'm showing you here. Allow for a tail of yarn. Using two sizes smaller needles than for ribbing, place the left twist on the needle. To form a purl stitch, reach the tip of the needle over and down far side of the strand that passes from the needle to the forefinger, then under and up near side of the strand from the needle to the thumb. Bring the strand back under and up far side of the first strand and return to starting position. To form a knit stitch, reach tip of the needle over and down near side and under the strand of the yarn that passes between the needle and the thumb. Then bring the needle over and down far side of the strand that passes from the needle to the forefinger. Bring this strand under first strand and return to starting position. You need to work firmly and maintain tension at all times. Alternate knit and purl stitches cast on to add as many stitches as required. This cast on is not stable. To secure it at end, add one half hitch cast on to serve as last stitch for working in the round or as salvage stitch. The next two rows will be identical. Knit the first stitch of the row and then slip the next stitch purl wise with the yarn in front. And then knit the following stitch and slip the next stitch purl wise with the yarn in front. Keep working like that for the rest of the row. You're still working with the smaller size needles and the next two rows are that double knit fabric that will create that semi stretchy edge and they could be eliminated for a fully stretchy edge. Keep in mind that even if you will be working in the round, these two rows are always worked flat. This is the second row for the semi-stretchy edge that could be eliminated for the fully stretchy edge. Uh, knit the first stitch, slip the purl stitch purl-wise with the yarn in front, knit the next stitch, slip the next purl stitch purl-wise with the yarn in front. Keep working like that for the rest of the row and as you can see it creates that rounded edge. If you work with the smaller size needles, which you still should be, it creates a neater edge. Um, but you can always just cast on and work with the same size needles as you use for ribbing. Now that I'm done with the double knitted last two rows, I can switch to the larger needles and either join to work in the round or work flat in established sequence. Knit one, purl one. This is exactly what I will be doing for the rest of this row. If I were to skip the last two rows, I would have started to work one by one rib with larger needles, flat or in a round, and that edge would have been fully stretched 
stretchy versus this one that is semi stretchy and a bit more rounded. This is the alternating cast on for one by one rib. Enjoy.